How should we live after receiving Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? I know that there's a lot of changes happen in our lives right now. After you receive our Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, the brand new life was given to you and me. And that is the product of the, what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That's the product of His blood. And now we are children of God. We're not called children of God. We are now part of His kingdom. And our Lord Jesus Christ will help us to glorify our Father. And the Holy Spirit will help us to glorify Lord Jesus Christ. And our Spirit is indwelling in us. He sailed us to prove that we are His children, that we belong to Him. So now, God did, us, did not make us a robot, still give us the freedom how we should live. The moment that we receive, the moment that we have new life, the new spirit is living in us, that's also the time that we start the <clears throat> spiritual battle. Because our enemy, he is not happy that we are now belong to God's kingdom. And Satan can no longer enter to us because the Holy Spirit now who is indwelling in us right now we are now belong to him but there are some doors or some ways where Satan can inject us like our mind is the playing ground of Satan our um, nature that's why this body will will, will go back to, to earth because this is corrupted but time will come God will give us a new body for our soul but the good thing is that we have a new spirit we have a new life and our soul will be going to heaven and our name is now written in the book of life in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 to 26 this is the writing of Paul to the Galatians and we can get some lesson this message and how we should walk as we follow our Lord Jesus Christ in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says so I say let the Holy Spirit guide you your lives then you won't be doing that your sinful nature craves the sinful nature wants to do evil that's the nature which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants and the Spirit gives us the desires that are opposite what is sinful nature's desires these two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out your good intention and that is daily in our lives we're always battling with our flesh and our spirit so how we sh if we should live in the spirit or we should live in the flesh if we, if we live in the flesh, in verse 19 it says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful, pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, and wild parches. Before Christ, this desire, this sinful nature, it's easy for us to do because that, that is designed for us. That is our life before. But after receiving of Jesus Christ, now that is our enemy. This nature is not already belong to us. This nature has no power to to empower to our lives but sometimes if we live in the flesh what do you mean by live in the flesh live in the flesh is like to live as self-centered we live in our own self to be uh, to live in the spirit is like christ-centered we we allow that christ is the center the whole spirit is the sinner he is the one he's the boss to our lives so if in in 22 it says 
but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of the fruit of life. If we live in the Spirit, we always have love. The love of Lord Jesus Christ. The joy. We have joy, we have peace, we have patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's how a Christian would supposed to live. We should have this fruit in our lives. And that is the proof that that we are belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 24 it says it's a reminder. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cro- to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or jealous of one another. But either we should we should love one another. And that is the most important as we walk, as we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us continue to, to, to entrust ourselves before God. And there are two important things that we, that, that we should uh, do every day in our lives. First is that prayer. We should pray. Prayer, it's not about asking to God of all our needs and all I want. What we want. But prayer it is our is our daily surrendering to our God surrendering means that there's nothing that we can do to ourselves we need God we need him because if we don't pray it means we are self-centered we we are the our, our self our idol is ourself we follow ourselves so we are still the order of ourselves but always we are already on for Lord Jesus Christ and we need to surrender every day in our lives so we follow him and that's how we should walk and that's how we follow our God our Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> to walk in the spirit daily our prayer and also the word <clears throat> of God we need his word we need to study this word because the the word is the food to our spirit. We will grow. The, the word is the sword of the Holy Spirit, and we need it every day because we have a daily battle, spiritual battle, and we need God to protect us every day. And always remember, we are always conqueror. We are always victorious because we have God who is in us God bless everyone and I hope and pray God will bless you more